Welcome to They Think It's All Over. Helping out David this week is a comedian who began his career as a singing Tarsnogram, which was the last time he ever swung both ways. <laughs> Julian Clary. <laughs> David's other guest is a comedian who held his school record for being caned. In fact, this is the first time he's been able to sit down since 1978. Jeff Green. <laughs> <laughs> With Gary and Rory is Channel 5's voice of football, who was initially best known for his radio commentaries until he joined Channel 5. Since when, he's been best known for his radio commentaries. <laughs> Jonathan Pearce. Now, it's the last show before Christmas and David Gower is 4-1 up with one to play. Although, judging by the way England's cricket team has been collapsing, Gary Lineker is still favourite to take the series. <laughs> we begin proceedings by highlighting a pair of plodding performances and the even more plodding excuses used to explain them away. Gary, Rory and Jonathan. In January, Newcastle were drawn to play away at Stevenage Borough in the FA Cup fourth round and came away with a fine 1-1 draw. Now, of course, the Premiership team would have nailed the arses of the non-league side had it not been for one telling factor. What, according to then-manager Kenny Dalglish, was the real reason that Newcastle failed to win? Gary's team. I remember this fixture. I think things got fairly ugly later on. Beardsley came on a substitute. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Um, had the players been out the previous night with the Newcastle Board of Directors? <laughs> a brothel, perhaps? No. <laughs> Is there a brothel in uh, Stevenage? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Was there a problem with the Stevenage ground? Did it contain 11 better footballers? <laughs> That's certainly true, but it's the excuse we're looking for, not the real reason. And it's an excuse given by Kenny. Yeah. I remember his exact words, which are, well, it's getting funny. That's <laughs> really Maybe we're certainly... I think it would be a bit, anyway. <laughs> Nothing else is true today as it was then. <laughs> Absolutely perfect, but we need the translation to get the point. Actually, I think we need it with a proper commentary. How about that? Can we say it again with a proper Jonathan Pierce commentary? Yeah. Is that possible? <laughs> Do we want to see that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! It's uh, Stevenage on the attack. Oh, it's in! And the high pass from Newcastle. Oh, 1 0 down. The Masters are half mast. Is this the end of Stevenage? No! It's. It's. It's howling, growling, Graziole! That was very true to life, Jonathan, because the first goal was disallowed and you gave it. So. <laughs> I agree with him. But you know the answer, don't you, Jonathan? Well, I think, um, was it afterwards Kenny Dogley said something like, we were beaten because the ball bounced too much. It was too bouncy, the ball. It wasn't a premiership ball, it was a non-league ball or something. The bouncy, non-league ball. The ball. It's a tennis ball. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for that. And here's Stephen... And here's Stevenage manager Paul Fairclough to tell the story. Kenny claimed that the balls were too bouncy. In fact, they were bouncy balls, uh, which is a great shame because I know at one stage Kenny did endorse these footballs. <laughs> so, Kenny Dalglish reckoned the match ball was too bouncy. That's the Spalding 2000's top flight Kenny Dalglish ball. <laughs> Newcastle playing that during the run-up to the match, Dalglish banned them from doing two things, having sex and DIY. Although, in Rory's case, that's just one thing. <laughs> it's true, I've just built an extension. <laughs> Controversial Newcastle directors Douglas Hall and Freddie Shepherd resumed control of the club this week, just nine months after the disastrous trip to a brothel, which ended up costing them £6.7 million. That's for two shags, one massage, and John Dahl Thomason. <laughs> David, Julian and Jeff, your excuse involves that lantern jawed Formula One speed merchant David Coulthard. In 1995, Coulthard was strolling to victory in the British Grand Prix at Silverstone when he was officially penalised for breaking the rules and ultimately finished third. So, David's team, what did he do wrong and what was his excuse? Coulthard, he's, he's the. Coulthard? Coulthard, sorry. He's the one that looks like Buzz Lightyear with a pole up his arse, doesn't he? <laughs> I think he was cruising around. Mm. 
Then all of a sudden, he was shunted up the rear. <laughs> and then, all of another sudden, <laughs> someone was lapping him. Well, you wouldn't be able to, would you? I can't know. In a perfect world, that'd be true, but no. It's not true. No, it's not true. It's, am I warm? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I'm moist. <laughs> I'm in deep shit, then. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you know who I am, do you? I heard. You know I back to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, at times like this, we'd actually take anyone to bat for us, don't worry. <laughs> Julian, are you gay? No, he's Australian. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I actually think we only watch, we only watch Formula One for the crashes, don't we? I mean, say, otherwise, it's really tedious. I think they should have a load of banana skins on the first bend. <laughs> and then one of those Scalextrix crossovers <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> I like the fact that you, get, you asked an ex-footballer and a football commentator a question on football, mm. and we get a question on Formula One. <laughs> is it to do with drugs? No. Oh, well, I think it is. OK. <laughs> Was, didn't he uh, exceed the speed limit on the uh, pit lane? He may have done. And he got a penalty? He did. Um, it's something to do with drugs, though. Speed used to be a drug in my day. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up, mate. It's your show. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I suspect. Um, and uh, he had an electrical fault or something. He said, any, and, and his excuse was... It's to do with the minicabs. I should give you that clue. Minicabs? Oh, well, well, I'm, I'm way off. Well, no, you were nearly there. No, you were, you were there. Well, I'm going to give it to you anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah, yeah. We caught up with David Coulthard, uh, something Damon Hill's never managed to do, <laughs> at the McLaren Testing Centre in Barcelona. I was getting towards the end of the pit lane at Silverstone when my radio crackled and it was a taxi company from Toaster telling me to do a 2.30 pickup. <laughs> Finger slipped off the button, I was speeding in the pit lane, got a 10 second penalty and ended up finishing third. Excuse me. <laughs> got to go. Get out of the way! Go on! Well, it wasn't surprising that Coulthard failed to win the race. As soon as he got the call from the cab firm, he started taking the long route round Silverstone. <laughs> David Coulthard learned to drive at his dad's lorry firm, but old habits die hard, and in his first season he lost a race when he pulled into the pit lane for a full English breakfast. <laughs> in 1997, for a bet, Coulthard dyed his hair silver after winning in Australia. Of course, David, you never won in Australia, so what's, you, what's your excuse? <laughs> Incidentally, while our film crew was in Barcelona, they had a few hours to kill, so they thought they'd put to the test the notion that the city's favourite adopted son, Gary Lineker, is still a football legend in the Catalan capital. Lineker? Gary Lineker? I don't have any idea. He's no, maybe a pop singer or something like that? <laughs> Michael Owen or David Beckham, but Gary Lineker no me suena. Además, con esta cara que tiene, parece, yo que sé, parece de un... And the same thing happened in Leicester. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have three points. <laughs> In what way do you look like Dumbo? Have they seen you naked or something? <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> Our next round is Author Author, which demonstrates not only that sportsmen make plenty of mistakes, but that writing their autobiographies is probably the worst. Gary's team, who committed this to print? I traipsed into the changing room, totally shattered, and grabbed the first beaker I saw. I took a long swig, and for the next ten seconds I couldn't breathe. It was a very large, barely diluted vodka and orange. As I was struggling to catch my breath, the manager walked in. I think I've just drunk your drink, boss. I gasped. My drink, he said. What do you mean, my drink? It's not mine. No, boss, I thought. Of course it's not. The man who comes in to fill up the baths always brings a quadruple vodka and orange with him. So, Gary Steele? Could have been anyone at Middlesbrough, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they've got Rickards, they've got Becks, and they've got Gordons. That's Middles true. Mm -hmm. And they're going to sign someone called Lager Tops, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Jazza, he wouldn't, no, he wouldn't have had the orange, would he? 
just no. the boss involved in that. <laughs> well, it involves the boss, doesn't it? I think that's the clue in there. Well, I should think it would be... Um, any manager famous for drinking Cluffy, Clough, you reckon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should think it would be something to do with Cluffy. Stuart Pearce? No. Teddy's just in a book. Teddy Sherman? Yeah. Yes, indeed, that was Teddy Sherman. Well done. That was from Teddy Sheringham's autobiography, My Autobiography. <laughs> describing an occasion at Nottingham Forest in 1991 when he helped himself to Brian Clough's traditional half-time orange and quadruple <laughs> vodka. <laughs> Teddy Sheringham once described George Graham's management style as do it my way or you ain't gonna be playing, as opposed to Alex Ferguson's management style, which is you ain't gonna be playing. <laughs> Wait and see, who do you suppose wrote this? We had to go into the dressing room, squat down, and with the help of some KY jelly, <laughs> stick a gadget up our backsides and leave it there while we went back to the nets for more batting and bowling. <laughs> there was no way I was going to do that. Instead, when no one was looking, I duck into a toilet and tape the gadget inside my shorts. So, David's team, any ideas? It's a coincidence, is it, that we've got this? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea cricket was so exciting. <laughs> and you say this goes on for five days. <laughs> Not in England's case. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> well, a gadget. What's a gadget? Does it have whiskers? <laughs> I went to a comprehensive. We, we couldn't afford KY jelly. We had to use that stuff you got in the middle of pork pies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a lovely thought. Thank you. I suspect it wasn't W.G. Grace, though. So. No. He had all sorts of brothers with two initials, but none of them are called K.Y. as far as I know. The Grace brothers. That's right, they started a department store, didn't they? That's a bit of camp comedy you may not be familiar with. Oh, <laughs> so this I'll make a note. <laughs> Just keep me informed. I'd much rather be on your team. <laughs> Julian. And I've never, it's interesting. Well, it's, it, your mate here is perfectly moist. So why do you want him? Well, I've never seen him face to face before. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is things have changed since I was playing. In those days, it was just the umpire put a finger up. <laughs> Very good. Sometimes they put two arms up, don't they? <laughs> can I just ask? It was, this is some, some cricketer, one assumes, who was, who was actually bragging the fact that he didn't... Well, he basically was defending his crease. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to go overseas. We've got to go sort of a bit, bit further... I think everyone would be happy if you went overseas, David. Perhaps <laughs> it's Australian. Uh, actually, I'll the only... The only I'll hand it across. Across. I'll I'll think of any Australian cricketers. He was never out there long enough. <laughs> It does strike me sort of like a, a warnism. It's a, a Shane Warne type reaction. Absolutely correct for three points. That was Shane Warne. <laughs> From his autobiography, My Own Story, Jeez. describing a hot day during Thank his you. time at the Australian <laughs> Cricket Academy. The gadgets up the backside were apparently designed to indicate how much body fluid had been lost, although Merv Hughes is still wearing his to this day. <laughs> Shane Warne, along with two other players, has alleged that the Pakistan captain, Salim Malik, offered him £125,000 to play badly. <coughs> David, the moat, the castle, the acres of rolling park land, <laughs> suddenly it all falls into place. <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> and so at the end of that round, David's team have six points, and uh -huh. Gary's team have six points. Oh, yeah. We crack on with our photo opportunities round where we look at some of the compromising positions sports people put themselves into just to get their pictures in the paper. Gary's team, what can have persuaded the world's finest rowers, Redgrave and Pinsent, to have agreed to this? <laughs> no, I remember this. This is, this is um, when they were extras in an elephant porno mu movie. <laughs> Again, starring Jumbo Cummings, of course. <laughs> something to do with shaving, shaving foam. Are they shaving something? Fatima Whitbread, maybe? <laughs> this is a Noel's house party stunt. Is this when Noel Edmonds' ego exploded? <laughs> I'd say they're selling something. Selling mm. something like um, 
foam or or washing up liquid, something like that. Would you like to go for which one? Yeah. Are we allowed to mention mm. brand names on this programme? Yes, as long as they're not that one. What? <laughs> I never ever mention <laughs> anymore. Fairy liquid? Fairy liquid, oh. yes, in fact. Redgrave and Pinsent were taking part in the Fairy Challenge, which I hasten to add is a promotion for a certain brand of washing up liquid. <laughs> Stephen Redgrave overcame dyslexia to become one of Britain's finest ever sportsmen. His greatest moment came when he was awarded the BSE by the Quorn. <laughs> Matthew Pinson first got into serious rowing when he left school. In fact, he delayed his education for three years by going to Oxford University and rowing. <laughs> David Steen, what do you think inspired Manchester United's Paul Scholes and Ryan Giggs to take part in this touching scene? That Danny Bear looks rough, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a makeup on, yeah. <laughs> this is the posh part of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> is this, was this when the earthquake hit the village people auditions? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that mm. bulge under the duvet there is semen. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <clears throat> Uh, it can't be. It can't be. It's, it's a Man City bedspread. It's 100% down. <laughs> Did they ask for a hotel room with Sky? <laughs> it's not a good picture of my Ryan, is it? No. Your Ryan. Doesn't, doesn't look good in gingham. <laughs> Has it got something to do with this, because uh, I know we're, we're faffing around, this oh. quality, these two quality signs there. Quality is uh, It's a hotel, isn't it? Yes. Well, they're, and yeah, they're, build, they're building a hotel. Who are? Well, old Mass United. Absolutely right, yeah, for three points. In fact, Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes were advertising the forthcoming opening of the Manchester United Quality Hotel. Check out time is 12, but if you still haven't scored, you get an extra 10 minutes. <laughs> All the features of the hotel are named after Man United players. There's the David Beckham suite, the Andy Cole brasserie, and outside the front door, the Teddy Sheringham bench. <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team has nine points and Gary's team has nine points. It's time now for our pro celebrity groping round as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Julian, if you could move up the front, taking your blindfolds with you, please. Come on. <laughs> David. A lot of nervous laughter out now. Ready? Just, well, I'm going to wait for you. <laughs> I think you might be safe. <laughs> <laughs> OK? Yes. <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Seconds start now. <laughs> what <a> day. <laughs> uh, that's just on she put on. What? What have you found so far? Well, a bit of midriff bowl. <laughs> oh. I think they're wearing. Yeah. They're wearing skirts. <laughs> What's up there? <laughs> There's no protection. <laughs> if anyone's looking for gadgets, can you do it? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, they're all wearing skirts. Can't see I'm going. It might be a clue uh, over to your left. Uh, well, there's a lot of hairy arms and skirts. Is it? Is Betty Stover still playing tennis? What's <laughs> Hang on. Well, none of them. Are... How many have you got? 
Julian, there's a piece of equipment to your left. Oh, to How my left. You got? Is it about You're one, telling two. me. Keep going. <laughs> what, beyond Any this more? person? No, no more. Okay, oh, hang, hang on. So, oh, careful. <laughs> ah. It's a pole, David. <laughs> It's some kind they of... Were sort of basketball type thing. Basketball so is involved. How, um, sort of, well, they're wearing skirts. It's a bit worrying, because it could be netball, but... Yes, it could be. It could be, it's but... It's full time the team. Um, but they're fellas. Is it the England's, sort of, almost men's type netball team? Or Absolutely <laughs> correct. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Right then, Gary and Rory, if you'd like to take your positions, please. <laughs> Thank you. I heard your commentary the other day, Jonathan. I didn't even have my radio on. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Start now. <laughs> what have you got? Here? I don't know. Something furry. Oh. <laughs> Christ. Blimey. A man. There's an animal here. A man, a man and an animal. Is it Richard and Judy? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. I've got. We've got an animal. Yeah. And what sort of animal? Someone with a cape. It's not Batman and Dobbin, is Excuse it? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good! Uh, is, it, oh, is it the Pearly King? No. Nope. Mm. Gary, I've got the horn. Because <laughs> <laughs> Julian's behind you. It's a cow. It's a cow. What, what sport involves cows? Sailing. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, <laughs> what do you think then? A cow and know. a bloke? Pantomime. Actually, it could be Frank a bull. Bruno. It could be a bull. Yeah. Is it? Matador. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. Yes, it was, in fact, Frank Evans, Britain's top matador. Yeah, we had it. You got that one, Well, I'd be a matador if all the bulls look like that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so at the end of that round, David's team have 12 points and Gary's team have 12 points. <laughs> we end, as usual, with our ball-endorsing, vodka-quaffing name game, and this week it's our team game in which every name is a real name of a genuine sports team from somewhere around the world. We're going to have David's team to go first, so Julian, you'll be doing the clues. The name of the team? Yes. Start. OK, and your 90 <coughs> start now. Um, this country that we live in. England. England Thank yeah. you. Oh, um, is that it? Homosexuals Apparently. Recreation Area. Um, <laughs> a Scottish team. Um, um, homosexual, a word for yeah. homosexual. Um, well, I don't, I don't want to be insulting, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Queen. 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 Yes. Oh, uh, Recreation uh, area. Uh, Queen's Park. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, a type of bicycle. This is... Um, um, uh, a, si uh, uh, a tricycle? No. Um, no, uh, a make a bicycle. Oh, rally. Rally. rally? Yes, and a type of fruit that is suggestive. Uh, <laughs> rally mango? Rally banana? Yes. Oh, oh, rally banana. Um, oh, they play at the cottage. Um, full of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you all? A make of underpants <laughs> that's not Calvin Klein. Uh, Where from? A jockey? Yes. Oh. Jockey and, short. And what happens when a woman's pregnant? She's in the... In the club? club. Up the door. Jockey club. So, jockey club. OK. It's quite um, straightforward, aren't they? <laughs> they were. OK, two words. <laughs> 
the, the first one, first syllable is like the thing that's just been on that animal. Cow. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. And the second one is someone cow. who's mad. Cow, uh, um, crazy. To do with the moon. Uh, uh, lunatic. Local. Cow. Cow luna. Cow luna. And the second word is, um, what's a banana? Uh, what's a banana? Fruit. fruit. An orange. Yes. Cow luna fruit. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Very good. Um, <laughs> Okay, Lily Savage is uh, an artiste of what caliber? Um, very, very good quality. <laughs> Without dispute. Okay, so that means you've moved on to 18, which means you need six to draw level, seven to win. Okay, yep. and your 90 seconds start now. Um, England's favourite football team. Um, Manchester United. Correct. Uh, first, the letters of the alphabet. Oh, a, B... Brilliant, Gary. <laughs> Not more recent. This is uh, older. Cambridge's Reserve Rowing Crew. Oh, Goldie. Very good. This is a song by Elton John, a uh, city in um, Pennsylvania. Um, Phil Philadelphia, Philadelphia Freedom. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, a euphemism for a, a word meaning sexual intercourse. <laughs> Begins with the same letter, and Shag. it's a corruption of fingering, actually. Finger. It's true. It's true. <laughs> a linguistic nugget there for you. It's, um... Uh, <laughs> Stephen Redgrave might have spelt fridge. Uh, yeah, that's very good. What do you do, Frank? Frank, lovely, thank you. Um, used to smell... Mm. Used to smell... Smelt. Smelt, very good. Uh, um, this, is where the Lord, this is where the Lord Mayor lives, in a, in a city. Mansion House. No, no, smaller, smaller city than that, you know. Town Hall. Yeah, and it's what scriptwriters write. Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish! Uh, no! Town Hall Literally, Town Hall what do they write? Script. Word. Correct. This are the most intelligent marine mammals. Whales. Oh, for <laughs> dolphins. <laughs> dolphins. You can't have whales are intelligent in the same sentence, can you? <laughs> So you moved on to 20, which means this week's winners are Gary's team, but the series winner for two is David's team. Yes. We'll be back with special shows on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve, so it's thanks to David, Julian and Jeff, Gary, Rory and Jonathan, and we're all off to enter the Fairy Challenge. My name's Nick Hancock, <laughs> they think it's all over, it is now. And the boys will be back for a special Christmas showing of They Think It's All Over on Christmas.